Hi guys, this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech and today we're going to dive in a little bit more on this battery pack that came out of the uh, MacBook 1400 series laptops and we're going to talk a little specific about it and uh, go into some detail on it. So we will be back in 10 seconds. Okay, so we're going to dive into this thing a little bit more here. And um, last time we talked about it, uh, we got it out of the case. And since then, I've been doing a little research on this. Now, number one is uh, I've been scouring the internet for replacement cells on this thing. And I did find them, but I was making the assumption that they were the full length here and they produced. 2.4 volts. Well, actually, as it turns out, there are actually two cells in here, one, two, and these are 1.2 volts each, so that would make it 2.4 volts. These are also 3,800 milliamp cells, so I've got eight of them on order, and what we do is we take two of them, hook them in series, just like this is. This whole thing is a, this whole thing is a series string, and uh, that totals up to 9.6 volts at 3,800 milliamp. And this uh, has got obviously like cardboard on the outside of it with a clear uh, plastic coating on it, kind of like shrink wrap, obviously, um, and that just keeps the uh, cells protected and nice and tight. Um, also, I ordered them with the tabs on them, so that way I don't have to worry about directly hooking it to the battery. I just solder the tabs together, and that'll make it a lot easier. Now, I've actually taken, um, like I said, I cut the, the protective paper off of this here in the coating, and uh, so that's what it looks like. And on the connector here. This is what goes into the computer. And I'm going to hopefully turn this over so you can read it here. So this one here is for the positive battery. Goes to that terminal there. This next one is temperature which goes to this thermal protective breaker. Okay. And then the next one here is ground. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in a minute here. And then uh, this one here is the uh, goes to the battery ID negative. I'm not sure what that means, but the negative terminal means it goes to the other end of the battery. I'm not sure what the battery ID means. As you can see, there's a diode in here. And this is the thermo cutoff switch here, or slash circuit breaker protection. It's thermally activated. When this battery is overcharged or gets too hot, that's going to trip until it cools down. This diode is going to uh, basically keep this these cells, when they discharge, it keeps them, if say one cell is really low, it won't drain the other cells down. This is going to protect the circuit. Um, they put different uh, diodes in for different things, but that's what this is. I've checked it. It's fine. Um, there's some writing on it. When I take this thing apart, I might just go ahead and pop a new one in there since we're doing it anyway. And if I can find another one of these, either this meter's fine. Um, it, it, it's making connectivity right now. It's um, but I don't know if it'll trip if it gets hot. So if I can find another one of these, I'll put a new one in. But yeah, it's basically, it's pretty simple construction. Um, this is all tied together. This is actually corroded through. Uh, this is usually the way they do it on here. This is uh, um, uh, steel cladded with uh, stainless steel on it sometimes or nickel. A lot of times they use nickel, it's very conductive and it holds up to the heat. Um, 
But anyways, talk about the uh, the ground here. Now, when I did the video earlier um, this week, I said, you know, this has got a lot of battery acid on it. Well, what I got to noticing is when you pull this up, let me just get underneath of it here. I'm just gonna let me pull this out because this is all very, very thin. Okay. And this is all copper. You can see where it got corroded on the end there a little bit, but this is a big sheet of copper. And uh, this was put in there. Uh, the ground goes to here, this little terminal here, okay, it grounds, but this thing primary purpose is to dissipate the heat because I was doing a little research on the batteries and when you put them in plastic cases versus being out in the open there's different uh, values of heat heat uh, resistance on these things as far as how hot they get and uh, they probably used went with the copper just to help dissipate the heat uh, because you have to vent whether it's a NICAD battery or a nickel hydrite metal battery like this uh, they do these do have vents on them actually you can see the bottom here there are little vents on it and uh, Basically, that's how they vent the gases if it's overcharging rather than hoping it doesn't explode And that's why these two components are in here to help prevent that to help the batteries from getting too hot and actually having a basically a meltdown and causing these things to uh, basically uh, explode same way with the diode in there too that's its function too so anyway i've got eight cells ordered and of course they're going to be green like that but i've got some shrink wrap i think i got some big enough i'll re-shrink wrap it if not i'll use some green electrical tape to, to tape them together and make them look nice and again they have the uh, tabs on them here and uh, that way it'll be a lot easier to attach them together um, same way on this side here. Now another thing too I noticed is on this thermal breaker here I was trying to figure out what the heck this material is and uh, it's not cardboard it's almost like it was a real thin type of leather uh, but we're gonna use uh, either uh, some shrink tubing to put in there or we're gonna just use some uh, electrical tape to put in there uh, same way with this here too. It's the same stuff. This here just basically connect is protecting this uh, connection between this point and this point on the diode. So we'll uh, we'll address that too. Uh, same way here. This actually looks like cardboard here. That's what it, and I just they're just protecting it so it doesn't short out on anything, especially with that copper on the back of it there. And uh, that's pretty much uh, picking it apart here. I'm trying to solve the mystery on this thing. And I've got a lot of information online about uh, the batteries, but you know, when they when they make batteries, you know, they, they do, the, the things that are detrimental to batteries is if it gets a short circuiting of obviously the battery terminals or excessive high rate of discharge or charge. Um, their thing is uh, voltage reversal and that's discharging the cells of the battery below zero volts. And that can be a problem on these about devices too. And also uh, charging of the primary batteries. And then also uh, the last is the improper charge control when charging secondary batteries. Um, so yeah. So basically these conditions can cause an internal pressure increase within the cells resulting in an activation of the vent device or rupture or explosion of the battery, which we don't want that. There are a number of means to minimize the possibilities of these occurrences. And number one is putting a thermo switch in here. And then the other thing is putting a diode in here that helps again uh, that keeps from the batteries discharging to a negative zero volt. Uh, it also aids in also overcharging on this thing. Um, so it's actually serves two functions. 
So anyway, that's what I've been learning about this particular battery. Um, you know, the advantages of the nickel hydrite batteries is the, um, unlike the NICAD batteries, these do not develop memory on them. You get these things, you can charge these up a thousand plus times. Uh, doesn't matter if you charge it all the way up or not, does not affect the memory on it. However, the NICAD batteries, they develop a memory. So when you get those things, generally what they will tell you is when you get them, charge it all the way up and then just charge it all the way down. And I want you to do that a couple times. Then when you charge it, normally uh, it'll charge properly, uh, but you want to charge it all the way up again. And uh, they don't last as long as the nickel hydride batteries, and that's probably why back in the day, that's why a lot of computer manufacturers went with the nickel hydride. And they still use them actually in a lot of devices today. I'm very surprised how much they use them today. Um, <clears throat> A lot of your uh, uh, alarms and stuff like that uh, for certain systems, uh, they still use the hydrate batteries. It's used in a lot of devices today. Uh, it's, a, it's amazing uh, what they're used in. So anyway, yeah. Um, when we get the new batteries, we will dismantle this thing. We will rebuild it. We will attach everything like it was originally. I've taken probably 80 photos of this thing, detailed photos of all the connections, uh, all the information I could get on it. So even if it was totally in a million pieces, I could reassemble it, no problem. Okay. So yeah. And then as far as this case goes, what I am going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit on the opposite side there. I mean, uh, I know this piece here, um, I need to clean up a little bit because that's what actually touches that that board right there this thing right there and this goes on it that lays down there and that, that actually contacts that piece right there um, and uh, but I just want to see it looks like it'll just all come out in one piece so that's good and like I said it's, it's really really thin and uh, I'm gonna try to wash it off a little bit I'm gonna be really careful with it I don't want to rip it or anything obviously but uh, yeah, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do on that one there. So anyway, guys, that is our second update on this. Um, please like this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot to me. I enjoy your input. Please comment on it. Uh, also, hit the subscribe button and click the bell. I appreciate it. You guys have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.